gonna let us go. Immersion heater called immersion water heaters. Mm -hmm. They go up inside the tank and they're they're heated electronically from generators. Okay. And that's uh, trying out to be the best way to do it so far. Bill builds steam rockets, so he's doing some math for us. Okay. And so this is something he built right here. This is we've not had this yet. We're going to do an automatic parachute. Uh, it's going to open up the parachute once they get to a certain altitude. Mm -hmm. And that's what. We was running out of time to install that today, so uh, we'll probably have that in for the next uh, launch. It'll be a lot better next time because yeah. I've got more time to work on it now. So Plus, I know what I'm dealing with now. <laughs> yeah. And we added two more cables yesterday. And It'll be uh, even safer next time. Yeah. And we'll just keep improving it keep until improving you go. It. And hopefully by the time so, you do go, it'll be good enough. It'll be good enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It better be. You can't, so, test, you can't test it, right? No. <laughs> the, only way, the only way you can test it is to take this back off the ramp. Go bolt it down somewhere and fire it off. Okay, mm -hmm. and now you're firing something 60. Well, we figure 6,100 pounds of thrust. What we need? I think because now he's like not. This is something else. You go between all these people. Okay, you go. And I've launched one before. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not an expert, in nothing. But you know, I know a little bit of something about it. And we're going. Hey, Mike, what about uh, the weight of your rocket? Well, that's about 1,200 pounds. Well, I think we may have to overcome that now. I'm going. Well, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Because it's not doing this or that. It's like this now. So now mm -hmm. it's got to pull the weight before it even moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first 1,200 pounds of thrust is just to keep it from falling backwards. Yes, oh, right. Okay. So, Which is a pretty yeah. scary thing. The first rocket that was tested for Evil Knievel in what 1972 at the edge of Snake River only had 1,200 pounds of thrust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it didn't clear the canyon didn't, either. It went right in there like a dart, didn't it? Mm -hmm. In fact, I think it stuck in the mud for three years or something. Remember that stupid? <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Superheated water, yeah, super heated water, called super saturated steam, but it's water that's still in the liquid state because of the pressure. Wow. It's like I like to call it a pressure cooker on steroids. You know, you just it can't boil because there's no place for it to expand. But when you open that, all of a sudden there's a place for it to expand. So as it's flying through that nozzle, it's expanding, which is letting the pressure drop, which is letting it turn into steam. And by the time it gets to the end of the nozzle, about 20% of it will be turned to steam. The rest is still water. That white cloud you see, that's just water droplets. Um, but it's, it's enough to create as much thrust as they do. And so you're like 400 plus degrees at the entrance to the nozzle. By the time you get out, you're down to the local ambient boiling point, 212 or whatever. So it drops that much temperature in that distance. And where the temperature goes is the heat of vaporization. You know, it takes a lot of heat to turn water from the liquid state to the vapor state. So that's the thermodynamics behind it. And it's just, it just tickles me to death. I just think it's so awesome, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, Mike, what's the origin of the uh, exhaust? Oh, this is an old air filter. Oh, no one knows what it is. Bought it for 50 bucks, and I took the rest of the air filter out, and this is a shape, perfect shape for a nozzle. Well, that's the housing for it. Huh? The housing for it. Yeah. Yeah. It sure looks pretty. Really, the the goal is that, like, if you get this to launch, then that's going to sort of propel you toward the next stage of going to space. Not me. Okay. Uh, the, the deal with Mike was this. Okay. Me, I work on man speed cars. This isn't even something that I do. I just do this to. I don't think he always crosses all his T's and dots all his I's. So I just kind of help him out. Then it turns into a nightmare. That wasn't what it was supposed to be, okay? Uh, I, I'm, I'm a land speed guy. I, I'm a land speed guy. I work on rockets mostly. Uh, and this is kind of, this is like, these steam rockets are like child's play. They're, they're not real rockets, in my opinion, okay? 
So I just kind of help him out. No, once once Mike gets this thing launched, he's going to try to raise some money for the space shuttle. I think it'll take a year or two. In that time, I'll finish building my car. And we're going to set up the museum. It looks like it's going to be in Joshua Tree. And uh, 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 just I wanted to base everything there out of this Joshua Tree Museum, you know, his flight rocket and uh, my land speed cars and stuff. And it's the, the museum's going to be called Daredevils and Speed, and that's what it's going to be about. Because you really, I don't want the youth of this country to not realize how important it is to hang it out for something. See what I mean? People just hanging it out for something is important. Whether you're hanging out for your family, you know, like these guys in the military, you know, or you're, you're hanging out for your, yourself, you know, whatever, you know. You gotta do something. Oh, I just sit around and wait to die. What the hell is that? You know, so many people just do that. They just exist. They go to Starbucks. That's their excitement for the week. You know what I mean? They, they, they just exist. Watch TV. You know, what are you gonna get for teeth stuff? Shit. What are you gonna get? Yeah, that's what this whole thing is about. Yeah, right. That's what our thing is about. Yeah, that's, right. That's it. Motivate yeah. people. Let's take it to the next step. You see, you millennial guys, you guys got something that we never had. Okay, and that is the internet. The internet links you all together. See, if you want to know the truth about something, look it up. There it is. All we got was bullshit. For the time we started going to school, we taught lies. You know what I mean? And then, and then we we get out of school and we basically who step to the, whatever the science is there. That's why Mike picked this this launch, uh, this research flat earth thing. He did that because he took the weirdest thing he could think of. And he said, let's find out if that's real. Okay, you know, let's find out, let's see if they'll, they'll, see if they'll look. He's not telling you the earth is flat. He's saying, you research flat earth, okay? You look into that, see what I mean? And he, Mike thinks that, that, that in the end, once, once the millennials get it, that uh, that uh, life is what you make it, not what we've given you. We gave you a bunch of bullshit. We gave you lies and shit. We, we screwed you guys. We gave you Vietnam. We gave you just horse shit, okay? You guys take the world in a better place because you're all connected. You see? That's what, that's what Mike's doing that for. It's the only reason. No so, other reason. This space thing isn't a dream of yours at all. No. You don't no. care about space? I don't believe you. You mean go like going to space? Yeah. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, it, it was a weird thing. Like when I was a kid, People would ask me, I did, I, I, I entered science fairs. I used to win science fairs. In fact, I won, like I told you, all city, Chicago. Okay, I, I had sixth grade, sixth grade. People would say, well, would you want to be an astronaut? And I just thought, not really. You know, really, when you think about it, what are you, an astronaut? You're 100 miles up looking down at the Earth, going around every night. And that's not, you know. If you want to tell me, do I want to go to stars? Sign me up. You get the Starship Enterprise built, I'm there. You know what I mean? I want to see other planets and other moons. That I'd love to see. Yeah, I like. I, I always watch every time NASA finds a new planet. You know, I want to see what it looks like and stuff. You know, and even though half of that's horseshit, still, it's kind of cool. But to, to go around the Earth and look down, you know, that, that's fine. That's, that's not going to space. That's just you know, in free fall, 100 miles above the Earth. That's not space. Space is boogie. Space is going. You know, space is. If it, think about this. If space is infinite, okay, then how many planets have life on them throughout the universe? It's infinite. Okay, what are they like? Who knows? You know. So this launch right here has to happen to make the space launch happen. Well, good luck, Mike. I hope it does. We'll be here.